on the to the PC and instead of us assigning static variables, we're gonna select DHCP. And there we go. And if we were to, you know, just for kicks, add an additional device. We could uh, quickly establish IP address configuration of that additional device. Okay. All right. Yeah, you basically I had to play with the um, the application a little bit. That's just a glitch within Packet Tracer. Yeah. Okay. The question is um, for the additional 1,900 hosts. Would the administrator have to go to each one of those hosts and um, configure the NIC to automatically? Um, request an IP address. Well, if you buy a Windows machine, for the most part, by default, when those machines come out the box, they're automatically, they're already configured for a DHCP. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to config configure an additional 1900 host that's going to be simulated. That's why I put that uh, text there. So when you submit your assignments, and if the criteria is that you need to establish enough IP addresses for, um, let's say, 2,000 hosts, then I'll expect you to maybe uh, annotate in text form um, 1,998 hosts, but you may want to configure or put you know, two actual hosts on the workspace just so I can see that they are requesting uh, KTP uh, services or they are ha have been appropriately assigned static IP addresses. Okay. All right, um, let's go ahead and deal with this network. And let's go back to the chart. Okay, uh, this, this is a network that has over 510 hosts. So we'll be dealing with this row. Although we needed uh, 513, the minimum that we could be allocated is um, 1,022. So we'll start with the F00 interface. The okay, internal interface, what's a good IP address? At 8.1, because we're dealing with this range here. What about the... Uh, subnet mask. Basically all we have to do is look at this row. 252. Okay. Let's uh, configure the server. Okay. What's a good IP address for the server? Excuse me? Two, okay. Right. Default gateway address, the address that we assigned to the router, right? Okay, and let's configure the DHCP service. We'll edit the default pool. And what's the DNS server? We'll just uh, make up an address. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll assume that we need to reserve some static IP addresses, so we'll ask the server to start issuing um, IP addresses starting with, uh, let's say, 20. 
How many IP addresses do we need issued? So no more than 500, right? Yeah. Well, five, we'll say 515. Do the save. Okay. And we'll test our uh, DHCP server. And it works. So if I'm grading this project, I'll assume that the server is going to work for the additional 510 hosts. Okay. Let's do a little housekeeping here. We need to label this network. What network is this? 155, 155 dot. Zero. Yeah, 0.0. .0. And what's the uh, slash? The slash is the 21. Okay. All right. And what about this network? 8.0 and slash 22. Okay. And let, let's move on to this network. We'll be configuring F00. That's, that network had three hosts. So we're looking at a range of uh, dot 12, 1 through 6. Okay, appropriate subnet mask. To okay. All right. Okay, this is just a, a we'll say this is a file server. No need for DHCP since there are only three hosts on this network. We'll use static. Twelve Can't use dot one. We put the dot one on the default gateway. All right, and let's go ahead to the printer. Okay, uh, good IP address for the printer, 155.155.12.3. Okay. All right. Let's put in the default gateway. All right. <clears throat> Are we done? Let's go ahead and configure these networks. Okay, let's start here. This is going to be one of those two host network. Looks like uh, the range would be dot nine, dot ten. Twelve dot nine. So whenever you see the 252, you know that's a two host network. That's a slash 30. Okay. So this uh, end of the link is on the same network. So this is going to be the 12.10. Okay. Let's do a connectivity test. Let's be sure we could ping across. Okay, we can. So we have connectivity from this interface to that interface. All right. Let's go ahead and configure these two interfaces. Again, this is going to be a two-host network. We're dealing with the range of uh, 13 and 14. 
See which interface zero three zero. Uh, zero three zero again. All right. Okay, let's do a connectivity test. I'm going to ping across. Okay, good to go. All right, let's um let's turn off the clock. See if we have connectivity. And no connectivity. Okay. Let's uh set the clock rate again. You see that the interface has changed to uh, upstate. And once again, we have connectivity. So if you're using a serial interface, the DCE must have a clock rate configured. All right. Should we be able to ping from PC1 to PC2? PC2 addresses. 0 0.12. So we'll go in PC1 and ping PC2. Good to go. We should be able to ping the default gateway. Good to go. Should we be able to ping from PC1 to uh, the server, this server, server 1? We should? Okay. What network is uh, Server 1 associated with? 155.155.8.0, right? Okay. Let's go to uh, Router 2 and look at the routing table. All right. These are the networks that this particular router knows about. Do you see the 155.155.8.0 in the routing table? You don't see it, so what does that mean? The router is going to drop the packet. Okay, but let's just test it. So the server address is uh, eight dot two. Okay, destination unreachable. So how do we solve the problem? What's that? We've got to get the destination network in the routing table, and we can do so one of two ways. We could create a static route, or we can enable dynamic routing protocol. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and configure uh, static route in the router. Now, I don't really need you to learn these 